All right, folks, I wasn't sure what to cover today as far as gun and Second Amendment news, so I posed the question on Twitter asking what you guys would want to see. There were a lot of suggestions, some of which I'm going to try to cover in upcoming videos, but the overwhelming majority of you asked for an explainer on the Benchmaid situation. The trouble began when the Oregon City Police made this post on social media thanking Oregon-based Benchmade Knives for helping them destroy some guns. Presumably, this was done to drum up some positive PR for the police and for Benchmade, but the post drew enough attention and caused enough uncomfortable side-eye from gun owners that the post was eventually taken down, but not before opening up a pretty revealing can of worms. Icky, anti-Second Amendment kind of worms. Worm! Given that there's usually a lot of overlap between gun owners and knife owners, this presents a bit of a problem. The original assumption here is that Benchmade was helping to destroy confiscated guns or at the very least buyback guns. The assumption was also that since Benchmade was helping out, that Benchmade and the police were in cahoots. This led to a social media firestorm that had a lot of people threatening to boycott. The Oregon City Police and Benchmade never came out and said the allegations weren't true, exactly, but they certainly tried to suggest that they weren't true. Benchmade issued an apology via Instagram, stating simply, We apologize for the confusion and concern that this post created. These were firearms that the Oregon City Police Department had to destroy in alignment with their policies. And then went on to say that they only destroyed the guns as a way to help the local police, as they're a supporting partner of the local police, and said that the police needed special equipment to destroy these guns, and apparently only Benchmade could provide it. They then ended the apology by stating, Benchmade is a proud and unwavering supporter of both law enforcement and Second Amendment rights. These are commitments that we do not take lightly and will continue to support well into the future. Remember that for later. The police, meanwhile, released their own statement, claiming that the guns had been turned in by community members who no longer wanted them, or else were guns that had been used in a crime and thus a judge had ordered for them to be destroyed. And, again, they mentioned how Benchmade is a strong supporter of the local police, etc., etc., etc. But that official statement is not what Captain Sean Davis told local Fox 12. Davis told the local news that these were actually the judge's order saying surrender all firearms to the police department. Now it is still possible that someone committed a violent crime and so their guns were seized. But typically when that's the case, A, they don't have time for a judge's order, and B, the language is a lot more along the lines of seizure rather than surrender all firearms firearms. To me, that statement suggests that these were, in fact, confiscated guns, because the police in the same article went out of their way to state that they weren't stolen guns. The police also went out of their way to point out that they weren't buyback guns. So how did the police get them? My suspicions on this were mirrored in an update by The Truth About Guns, which wrote that the police had stated that some of the guns were, in fact, forfeited to the police by court order due to a variety of circumstances. Others had been used in violent crimes, meaning that the two categories were mutually exclusive. One possible explanation is the Extreme Risk Protection Order. After all, Oregon did, in 2017, pass a red flag law and has been becoming more and more anti-gun over the last few years. People served with Extreme Risk Protection Orders get their guns taken away by a judge's order and don't typically challenge the order, as the court will not provide them with a court-appointed lawyer if they do. Was this the story with the guns from the Facebook post? We don't know, but for the police to then claim that they don't take away anyone's guns isn't quite accurate. Benchmade claims that they support both law enforcement and the Second Amendment, which is fine. But my question in that situation is always, what do you do if law enforcement is the one violating the Second Amendment? Yes, law enforcement does or is supposed to have an oath to the Constitution, but we also can't deny that there are cases in which law enforcement goes against the Constitution and specifically the Second Amendment. I've covered several such stories over the last couple years. So the question is, where does a company like Benchmade draw the line? 
To answer where that line may be, it might be helpful to take a gander at their political contributions. We are, unfortunately, in an age where every company has to take a political stance on something and donate somewhere. And leave it to the internet to find out exactly what that stance is and how much money was spent on it. Turns out that Benchmade has a history of donating pretty exclusively to Democrats. And not just their local Oregon Democrats, but also Democrats from Massachusetts, Colorado, and New Mexico. And specifically, Democrats who also happen to have a pretty bad track record with gun control. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the company, its management, or its employees are anti-gun. It could just be a matter of thinking that if people don't have guns, they'll buy knives, or that Democrats would never ban knives. <laughs> Whoops. It should also be noted that the website providing this information doesn't differentiate between donations made by PACs, employees, company owners, or their families. Only one single donation is marked owner slash manager, a $500 contribution to a Democrat in 2002. That being said, according to this chart posted on AR15.com, most of the donations were made under the owner's names. Either way, it is not a good look for a company that claims to be pro-gun. Some of their donations have gone to congressmen who supported shady universal background check bills, magazine limits, banning guns from public transportation, and allowing lawsuits against gun manufacturers for violence that they had no part in. The company donated almost $13,000 to Ron Wyden, who voted to ban any mags over 10 rounds, voted many times to restrict private gun sales, and close the gun show loophole. He scores an F on the NRA's grading system. The company also donated almost $8,000 to the sponsors of the newest background check bill. And they donated to Scott Brown, who is from Massachusetts, which really should say enough. He is a pro-gun senator from Massachusetts who also happens to support a federal assault weapons ban, supported the assault weapons ban in Massachusetts, and is against national reciprocity. Benchmade tried to explain this away by stating that the local Democrats they supported also support manufacturers, but weren't able to offer any explanation for donations to out-of-staters. The marketing director Matt Elliott also recently went on the Lars Larson podcast to explain that they only donated to Democrats who were the lesser of two evils, which I would like to point out is still evil. Elliot also claimed that Benchmade has donated millions to Second Amendment causes, but no evidence of those donations has actually surfaced. It's pretty understandable that people would be upset by this. The company's contributions were essentially their customers' money that was then given to anti-gun Democrats. Technically speaking, as far as I can tell, Benchmade never actually claimed to support the Second Amendment anywhere. Going through their website, their history, and their about page, I couldn't really find anything beyond a mission to sell knives. But there's an assumption. And then there was that whole public statement they made a few days ago. A final little interesting aside to this story was published by Recoil, which pointed out that the ATF does in fact have very strict guidelines on how guns are destroyed or rendered inoperable. But according to the photos posted on Facebook, those guidelines weren't being followed. A possible explanation was given by the city's community communications manager, who said the guns were being cut up to fit into smaller boxes to then be shipped to a third-party contractor who would actually destroy the guns. But the photos show the guns lying next to a bunch of rifle-sized boxes. The manager wasn't sure why those boxes weren't being used, and the police were unable to provide the dimensions of the boxes that were being used. Perhaps neither here nor there, but interesting. The manager also said that the police typically use a local machine shop to cut down the guns, but that this time the shop had refused for an unknown reason. It also turns out that it's not exactly state law or city ordinance to destroy guns. Guns turned into the police are allowed to be auctioned off. However, the police choose not to. 
In the end, a whole bunch of gun owners are now saying they're never going to buy another Benchmade product ever again. Whether you think the company cutting up a few guns under police request is an issue is a question of personal opinion. The Firearms Policy Coalition has already put in a public records request to get more information on the agreement between the police and Benchmade, as well as the circumstances under which the guns were ordered to be destroyed. Maybe it turns out to be nothing, maybe not. The donations, on the other hand, that's something that people aren't going to like and that people are certainly going to remember. That is your Second Amendment and Firearm News for the Week. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Drop a comment down below. Let me know, are you planning to boycott Benchmade or do you think this is something that was just totally blown out of proportion? And if you want to help support my channel in other ways besides just coming and commenting and hanging out, <laughs> you can join me over on Patreon or give a one-time donation through PayPal or Bitcoin. As always, thank you for watching, stay safe, and happy shooting.